just been thinking recently about a couple of passages. I made a little slide with them on. <clears throat> and they are James 4.2, part of it anyway, it says, You do not have because you do not ask God. And Matthew 7 as well, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Amen. And I was just wondering, when I read these passages, I wonder how many things that I would have now if I had asked for them. Because it says in James that you don't have now, not because you haven't done any work, not because you haven't been lucky, not because you live at the wrong time in the wrong place, insert reason here, not because of any of them, but Stephen, you don't have because you do not ask. Does that change maybe how often we're going to ask God for things? Because we don't have, and we don't have, because we do not ask. Now that you've heard these passages, I wonder what you're going to ask for. That is the question. And um, when me and my brothers were young, we used to play a game that if you had a million pounds, what would you do with it? What would be the first thing that you would buy? Or what were the things or the thing that you would buy if you had a million pounds? Of course, that's what they ask every lottery ticket winner. What are you going to do with your money? And um, it's something that's depicted in in cartoons, isn't it? Like, for example, you've got Aladdin with the magic lamp and he rubs the lamp and the genie comes out and the genie will give you three wishes. And of course, it's the start of many jokes as well. Also, we think about this when we have a child's birthday. When I was young, I don't know if this is still going now. Before you blow out the candles, you have to make a wish, right? So my question is, is God a little bit like a genie in the bottle? So you rub the bottle, God comes out, then you ask for that most ridiculous thing that you wished for when it was your birthday and you were a child. But James does carry on to say, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to break it to you that you who were wishing for a unicorn and a rainbow and a pot of gold. James says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. I don't know if you saw, there was a movie that came out in 2003 with the crazy actor Jim Carrey, remember him? And it was about a news reporter called Bruce. And um, Bruce was upset with life and he was angry at God. And all of a sudden God showed up, Morgan Freeman, as you know. And um, God gave Bruce, Jim Carrey, he gave him his powers for a little while. And so Jim Carrey, or Bruce, let's call him, he thought, this is amazing, I can do whatever I want. Started doing crazy things like fire hydrants breaking in the streets and like, all kinds of crazy things. And he started um, getting his own back on his uh, TV channel rival called Evan. But then all of a sudden, Bruce started realizing that as his role as God, 
lots of prayer requests started coming in. And he could hear all these voices all the time, all these voices, all these voices in his ear. It was driving him crazy. And uh, he, he wanted to have some kind of a system to deal with all of these prayer requests. A bit like uh, Rivers of Life Church Oxford, he set up a prayer request platform, right? And um, this computer system that was set up, it was like a little database and he just pressed the key to go and receive all the prayers on the computer. But when the, he started receiving his first batch of prayers, there were 1.5 million prayers to answer. Everybody asking for something different. I want a pet dog. I want a boyfriend. I want a girlfriend. I want a car. I want a journey. I want to travel. And many other different kinds of prayer requests. And so Bruce spends all night typing away, typing away at God's speed, you know, really, really fast. And then when he gets to near the end of the night, he stops and he says, oh, that's a lot. Let's see how many I've got to get through yet. And so he presses refresh. And the night started with 1.5 million that he had to get through. And now he had 3.5 million prayers. Always coming in, always coming in. And so he decides to solve his problem by creating a function on his computer system which is to reply yes to everybody. Every prayer. So he replies, click yes to all. Done. Puts his feet up. Then the problem is, the next day, the world is in absolute chaos. Because everybody's desires become reality. I wonder if it's a little bit like that. If all the prayers that I am praying now were to come true in this moment, would my world all of a sudden become chaos? And the other thing I could think of is a little bit like this. Imagine a small child getting everything they want. All the chocolate they want to eat. Give me chocolate, give me more chocolate, give me more chocolate. Every meal is burger, chips, coke. Like stay up at night to whenever they want, doing whatever they want, drawing on the walls inside the house. That would be chaos. And as adults, and as loving fathers, we know that this would lead to the child having a miserable life. And this is what our Heavenly Father sees when he looks at us, when he hears and receives our prayers. <clears throat> so what is the answer to our problem then? In Romans 12 it says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and his pleasing and his perfect will. It's amazing that the rich and the famous and celebrities and people that we celebrate and people that we might follow on social media and people that we imagine have the kind of life that we want to live. We want to be in their shoes. They've got it all going. They look great physically. They've got so much money. They travel to amazing places. They go to just the right dinners and parties. But it's amazing when you start reading the profiles of some of these people that you see that often they go from one broken marriage to another. 
They're very sad. And sadly enough, recently we've been seeing so many of them in the news that have got to such a desperate point in their lives that they're wanting to take their own lives because their life is not worth living. So what they found through all of their striving, they found that what they were pursuing was not good, was not pleasing, and was not perfect. So what is the key then? The key is to not be conformed by the pattern of this world. Don't expect the void or the emptiness that's inside of you to be filled with what those around you are filling their emptiness. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Just as when you start growing up and you no longer desire those crazy things that a child does, you no longer ask for chocolate and more chocolate and more chocolate because you become the parent and you grow in wisdom and your mind becomes transformed or changed. You start understanding what is good, what is pleasing and what is perfect. So my question to you this morning is, what are you asking for? What, is, what are the desires of our hearts? It's interesting that um, the disciples asked Jesus, show us how to pray, they said. And of course Jesus did say, give us this day our daily bread. And that does mean that when we ask God, God will provide for our every need, even miraculously. Whatever we need in this life, God will provide for it. He will cover that need. But Jesus also says in this prayer that he was teaching the disciples to pray. He says, forgive us our debts and lead us not into temptation. In other words, Father God, whatever gets in the way of a relationship with you, Lord, take it away. Whatever gets between me and you, God, because that connection with the Father, that is the true desire of our hearts. That is what will really cause us to be fulfilled. That even though there are some very wealthy, very successful people, they have this deep emptiness inside of them. That us, or that you and I, or that people we know around us, if they turn to the Father, if they connect to the creator of the universe, even though we have very little, our hearts can be full. And that, by the way, I'm not bashing celebrities or wealthy people. <laughs> Jesus had a very a rich friend called Lazarus. His heart was full. Jesus loved him so much that he rose him from the dead. I'm not asking us to not aspire to be successful in what we do, to even be able to have so much that we can bless our family, those around us. It's not about that. In fact, it doesn't matter at all because you can have nothing and your heart can be disconnected from God. It has nothing to do with what we have, what we do not have. And the other thing I notice about Jesus' prayer that he asked his disciples to pray 
is that half of this prayer is worship to God. Half of it is asking God to establish his kingdom here on earth. That is what our heart's desire is. If the kingdom of God would come in our families, in our workplace, in our neighbourhood, if the presence of Jesus through the Holy Spirit would be there, if we could experience the power of God. He says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. What our heart's desire is, is to be able to see the unseen realm, to be able to know that we have God as our Father. So we know that to, to know that we have a father in heaven, to know that we are children that are loved by God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And the prayer goes on, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. And he was talking about food and drink and clothing. And he said, don't strive after these things. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of these things that you need, all of these things that you want will be added to you. In a psalm that says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So whilst the Lord is working in you, and whilst you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind, for the meantime, do not stop asking for everything. The child asks for everything. That is the confidence he has before the father. And that is how the child learns what the will of the father is. Ask for everything you can. And listen to this. If it's big enough to worry about, then it is big enough to pray about. Whatever's going through your mind, whatever doesn't give you peace, pray about it. Whatever you want in this life, bring it before the Father. If the request is wrong, God says no. If the timing is wrong, God says slow. If you are not right, God says grow. But if the request is right, the timing is right, and you are right, God says go. Okay. Amen.